Understanding your comfort zone. That's the awesome. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> now we got it. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you, and you can hear me, and all is well. Wow, we got pass coming on here too. Awesome. Super oh. duper. There's Beth and Sandy and. Looking for Nisha. It's Hi, Pass. Good to see you. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Yoo -hoo! Yay. Awesome. It's another, it's another sunny day out there. Yes, it's a beautiful day here in Pennsylvania. I'm in Pennsylvania today. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> wow. Wow. So today's topic is happiness, understanding your comfort zone. Yeah, so what is a comfort zone? What does it have to do with happiness? How does it exist and how does it change? <laughs> That's right. That's right. So the power in that is, is really knowing where we're going to go from the prison that we're in to the promised land and where we have recognized our comfort zone and how we are comfortable there and where we take that risk to reach out of that comfort zone. Exactly. <laughs> and the folks are going to get some good insights here today and it's our great pleasure to pass them on. <laughs> awesome. So give me some insights how that works for you, how that actually happened with you in your life and how you recognize reaching out of your comfort zone made a difference with you and how you showed up. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I grew up in, uh, in a family of uh, five boys, and uh, I was number three. And uh, my parents were uh, religious, uh, professional, and principled. Right. And, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, with the uh, commotion and the competition between the, uh, us boys, and also the different families that were around. There were things going on that when I was a little guy, I thought, well, why am I not allowed to do that? Why, why can they do that? Why, you know, they must be somewhat special uh, or I must be somewhat less. And uh, so I uh, realized that much later and as I started to uh, switch that around to go back into my past and heal that wound and realize that I am not only enough, I am more than enough. <laughs> and so are you, and so is everybody. <laughs> so healing those limited ideas of the past that you've heard me call the inherited emotional jail a few times, is what allows us to expand. <laughs> and when we expand, we learn more, we connect more, we achieve more, and we earn more. <laughs> so that's, that's true for all of us, you're saying, and that's where we get to expand our consciousness or our way of being, that we get to reach ourselves out of that, that particular conditioning, that comfort zone, and to make that one step higher up on the rung of the ladder. Yes, exactly. But I think there's something that's not well understood. People tend to think of their comfort zone as a fixed entity. That, you know, I'm comfortable here, I'm not comfortable there. But that is not true because the boundary of our comfort zone is fear. And the less we take action, the more we fertilize fear. And so our comfort zone starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And the more we take action, the more we put ourselves out there, that gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So once again, it is action or effort that makes all the difference. <laughs> and you will ever so when you're in that comfort zone, that particular comfort zone, how do you know that 
you're allowing fear to squash you down so small. Sometimes that's a small smallness and allows you to be, to be stuck there. How do you know that if you don't know, is it desire that you have to have that, that brings you out of that comfort zone? Is it passion? Is it something that's, uh, that we can be more aware of? Yeah, okay, so the first thing is uh, developing self-awareness. Because self-awareness is one of the doorways uh, or one of the early gates on the pathway to self-improvement. So we gotta realize what's holding us back, how we're holding ourselves back, in fact, because almost always it's just us who's holding us back. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, if you think of somebody who's depressed, you know, they don't want to move, they don't want to take any action, they only want to be comfortable, they want to be sedentary, and they want to consume for instantaneous gratification. So, if you think of that, then the comfort zone is really, really small. They're afraid to go out and to take any action or do anything new or try anything new. Okay. Yeah. And so when we look at that extreme case, we know that the opposite is also true. So when people are really successful and really out there, then they'll stand up in front of anybody and declare what it is that they believe in. They'll go out and connect with anybody because they feel certain and confident in what they believe in and what they stand for and what their abilities are. So there's an imaginary wall built up inside of you that allow, that you've got so embedded as a comfort zone that you, in order to stand up in front of that cloud, or crowd, I'm sorry. You, <laughs> the cloud of crowd. <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the bread. Yeah, there you go. Then we're then we're real because, hey, we're we're coming from a place of passion then, or a place of, I believe in this and I'll stand for this. And it's a different. It's a it's it's also can be scary, but it's very rewarding. Yes, and I think we've talked about this once, because the border of our comfort zone is fear. So how do we deal with fear? Most of us, for most of our lives, we let fear be a wall that we don't go beyond. So when we go up against something and we start to feel fear, then we move back. But we don't need that. Like, fear is really important in the time of when we were cavemen and cave women, because we had to worry about survival. And fear is really important to ensure survival, but we don't really need to concern ourselves very much about survival. It's more about social embarrassment or somebody, uh, 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 you know, putting us down or something like that. So the idea of fear at that level is not that it should be a wall, but it's actually our doorway. When we feel that fear of embarrassment, that's fear of growth. So <laughs> what we want to do is grow ourselves into somebody that's more capable and more skilled, more connected. Wow, okay. So, what do you think of that, Pass? Yeah, so we want to think of that fear in a different way. So instead of false evidence appearing real or a future experience as real, then we want to think of it as feeling excited and ready. And when we think of that as feeling exciting and ready and we feel that feeling, we go, oh, oh, it's time to wake up. Because what we used to think of as, as a wall that we wouldn't go by actually has a door in it. And there's a handle on the door that we can open and the, 
And the thing that opens that handle is action. And so if we use that feeling to go, okay, wake up, pay attention. What is my critical action? What do I need to be aware of? How do I want to prepare myself? And then moving forward on that, then we open that door and what we get through to on the other side is freedom, <laughs> emotional freedom, achievement freedom, success freedom, earning freedom, those kind of ideas. So always going that one step further is really important because what that does then is that opens up our comfort zone to a new level and then we can go on and do the same thing again. And so following that pathway of those minor fears and seeing them as being excited and ready for our next level is the pathway to success. So what are some of the feelings that you can associate to those, uh, you know, the, the, the fear of the, the fears that you're talking about but also the the feelings of goodness that you're actually seeing yourself achieve the goals and the isn't there a feeling associated with those sometimes as well yeah 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 so the feeling of fear is uh, a little bit unique to everybody everybody will know their own sense of fear but it tends to be a sense of uneasiness or tension in the stomach area for most people, but it can also include overall tension in the neck or the shoulders or the back, can also include shallow breathing, can also include sweating. Uh, so, you know, that general feeling of anxiety or whatever uh, is fear. But what comes through when we get through on the other side and we have actually taken the successful action, mm -hmm. like successful in the sense that we actually did it, not successful in the sense that the person agreed with that we were going to approach or doesn't, that, that doesn't, that's not really important. What is important is that we took the action in the face of fear. And then usually after you've done that, there's a huge feeling of relief and lightness and freedom. Oh, wow. Repetition, thoughts, your passion, your, your feelings that you wake up in the morning and say and, and program yourself will enhance that breakthrough to that out of that comfort zone. Those yeah, yeah, well, the repetition like that helps, but the key factor is taking action in the face of it. Ah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, the more we do internal work to heal those old limiting beliefs, the better off we are, but nothing will replace the action. What do you say to that, Pat? I think as you become more active, you start to feel comfortable being uncomfortable. Like, um, so I don't, I don't have a comfort zone because if I get too comfortable, then I realize I'm not striving anymore. So I'm always looking to see how far I can push my limits, how far I can, how far I can strive. You know, when I can get that adrenaline flowing, because all. All fear does is get that adrenal gland going, and you get a choice to either fight or flight. You know, you get a chance to stand up for your dream, or you get a chance to run away from it. But it, that's all it really does. It sends that great sensation up your body, and you get to decide how you want to choose, how you choose to feel about it. Um, one of the things that I was talking about today in today's video that I, um, that I talked about, was you actually get to choose how satisfied you are. So if you're doing something and it doesn't feel good to you, don't do it anymore. And it doesn't matter what it may be. It may be loving your spouse. If loving your spouse no longer feels good, then you might need to love someone else because their level of appreciation may not be there. And it starts to steal moments of your own happiness. You have to be aware of how you're feeling at all times. You know, the greatest thing in the world is to know when you feel joyous. 
know when you feel sad. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> know all the way up in feelings so you know how to act upon it. You know, like I said, I don't really have a comfort zone because I've stepped into so many uncomfortable situations and, and loved it. So um, what I have what I have developed is a is an adrenal zone. One that's gonna get my, my legs shaking and, and my heart pounding really quickly. And then I know I'm I'm about to do something special, you know. Yeah. Something great is about to happen. Wow! Because for the reason, you know, it, it felt it felt sort of uncomfortable to start, and once you get anything started, you know, it always feels so much better. I remember the first time I was a disc jockey on the radio, you know, I was so scared, you know, to say my name, so I, I said I said the name of the guy next to me, you know. But once I got it, into the mic, you know, I wound up doing four years of, of uh, excuse me, the button. I wound up doing four years of radio, four years truly enjoying that situation and, and really getting to grow. But it does take an action. You know, people don't understand that stagnation is also an action. To not act is an action. You chose not to act. And that action in it has just allowed fear to win, has allowed happiness to run away, has allowed all kinds of other negative emotions to dominate your thought process. And, and, that, with the water. and that means you will never get what you love. When you let fear control you, you will never get what you love. That is so true. So there is a cost so for acting, and there is a cost for not acting, and the cost for acting has a reward, and the cost for not acting ends in pain. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow, I got tingles on that. Woo! <laughs> I understood you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> At the end of the word satisfaction is the word action. Yes. If we have satisfaction, there must be some action with it. Yeah. Or you never or your satisfaction. You know, you'll, you'll find momentary of happiness. It is like a sugar high. So you'll, you'll, you'll go from high of happiness and then you'll get these low periods because you aren't continual which is pushing you towards your dream, pushing you towards your goal, pushing you to smile. <laughs> I like that. I, I'd like to say some. Oh, we can't hear you, Paz. You can't hear me now? Oh, now we yeah. can. Yeah. Yeah, we, get, we really get this to make these enormous decisions. The greatest thing in the world that God gave us was free will. So we get to choose to be happy at all times. We get to choose to be blessed and highly favored at all times, especially the challenge. People think that the blessing is the success. No, the blessing was the journey. The success is the icing or the cherry on it. You know, once you climb the mountain, you feel so much better climbing the mountain than you climbing back now. <laughs> because you've already hit If you keep playing you're, you're mountain, breaking up, Pat, Pat. Pat, you're breaking up. Yeah. I don't know why. I'm in a good situation. I'm in, I'm in the park allowing my kids to run around and act a fool. You know. <laughs> you actually, you know, if you decide that you have a goal, you get to keep climbing and keep climbing until you reach the pinnacle, and then you get to reach a new pinnacle. Like putting out my book was a dream of mine. Now the next dream is becoming a New York Times bestselling author. So that's another, so the pinnacle keeps rising. When you have <laughs> and happy people, you'll find that the pinnacle keeps rising because they're always looking to be happier, more successful. So the only thing you can do is continue to ride that gravy train. But if you're around unhappy people, if you're around unsuccessful people, you're going to ride that misery train as well. You're going to find yourself doing less. 
You're going to find yourself drinking more. You're going to find yourself accomplishing less, and life becomes a lot less fulfilling. It's very challenging to overcome your environment. It can be done, but it's very challenging. <laughs> oh, no, we lost our Robert. But, Paz, there was something I wanted to add on about satisfaction because I think you're so right about that. But uh, I did a little research on it, and the prefix satis is actually Latin for enough. So what it's <laughs> talking about is enough action. When you take enough action, you get satisfaction. And satisfaction That's is a much higher feeling than pleasure and comfort. Yes. When you do something for someone, and, and this is what I was putting out to people, when you do something for someone, don't do it looking for a return from that person. The return comes from God, the universe, you choose to call infinite. And <laughs> I like that when idea. When you do something for someone, you should do it because if now, how they react to that, to that action shouldn't change how you're doing it. It should just change whether you'll do it again. You know, like, all the time, I'm a very simple man. All you have to do is show some appreciation, and I'll do something. But as soon as you show no appreciation, you also see that again. You know, there's exactly. 24 hours. In, there's so much time you can apply. I told her, I tell her all the time, I can apply my time differently. I can apply my time to something that makes me feel good rather than sitting around trying to make you feel good. Yeah, yeah. No, you're exactly right. And appreciation is what everybody wants. And as we give appreciation and receive appreciation, it powers us on to higher and higher levels. Mm -hmm. And we, we then feel able and willing to do more and to achieve more and to create more. And this idea of criticism is so opposite to that. And that's exactly what brings people down and brings their energy down and brings their achievements and their creativity down. So we have that choice on an ongoing basis. Do I bring people down or do I build people up? And it's way more fun to build people up. <laughs> it's that old story. It's faster and easier to tear people down because you can just criticize and say no. That's but right. It's hard to live there. <laughs> it's a little more effort to create and to appreciate and to propose. And it's beautiful to live there. So we get what our own choices. Step? Past, what kind of steps would you take, what would you give someone in a situation to get out of their comfort zone? What kind of steps would that, in your eyes, would someone have to take in general? Find a major definite purpose. Find a major definite purpose. Once you have a reason for life, once you have a reason for living, once you have a reason for doing, there's no reason to be in a comfort zone anymore. Once you actually have decided that life is worth living, a comfort zone is like a... You want to fly. You want to continue to fly. You want, you know, if you, if you want to make sure that your major definite purpose is something that's real to you, make sure you'll do it when there's no money coming in. And it's something that I feel good when there's more money than you can spend. One of the great things I, I got to talk to uh, Gene Landrum, founder of Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, yeah. You know, he took his journey of becoming a billionaire when he bought his big mansion. And when he realized that was someone else, he didn't really need the big mansion. He wanted the Chuck E. Cheese. He wanted to be able to make this impact on the kid. He had a family and everything else. He knew what his purpose was. So he no longer had to be You're breaking up. You're breaking up. You're breaking up for some reason. There you go. <laughs> You're in an echo box. <laughs> You're in an echo box. 
<laughs> You're an alien. I can see the big white teeth and this black face, and I'm telling you, it's, that's all I'm seeing. We're not getting the words. <laughs> <laughs> Your lips are flapping, ain't nothing coming out. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> what a pleasure it is to have you on board here, Pass. <laughs> if you know what your dream is, a comfort zone is no longer something that you require. You, you realize that people who require comfort zones and desire comfort zones also don't know what their major definite they also don't have a true calling in life. Someone who usually is afraid to be an entrepreneur in their own in their own dream. Their dream is defined by someone else. So once you define your own dream, a comfort zone, I wouldn't even know what that feels like. I started off with 25 cents hanging out with billionaires. You know, how could I be comfortable? I couldn't even afford the meal, let alone <laughs> some of the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed every moment that I was in the room. Because one thing I realized is my personal model. My personal model is I like me. I'm worthy. Some people may not like me, but I don't care. The people that matter will be glad that I'm here. There's always someone that cares that you're in the room. There's someone who you can make an impression of wow. who can then help you change your dream. But until you feel that you're worthy, then you're always going to feel worthless. You know, I've hung, I've hung out with billionaires. I've hung out with broke people. And I treat them all the same because I know my major definite purpose is to make sure everyone smiles, to help yes. people find and define their dream and understand dream. <laughs> it doesn't matter what your worth is, because my 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 uh, love is worth more than anything you can put in your bank account. That's right. It's all about love, because <laughs> love is happiness. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Pass. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Yes. That's really great. Hey, so do you guys have any questions out there about um, comfort zones and how they influence your happiness and how your happiness can influence them? <laughs> Woo -hoo! So let's uh, forget about uh, the idea of letting our comfort zone control us. Yes. Let us be in control of us. And then as we are in control of us, that old idea of going for comfort gets replaced by purposeful living and going for achievement. And this is all much, 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 much better. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Can you answer the question? There is a question here. Daniel. Daniel has a question. Could you read that question? Uh, make sure you're comfortable with confusion. And you can. Oh, that's a very good point you make there, uh, Daniel. Uh, thank you for that. What he's saying, if anybody can't see it, is make sure you're comfortable with moments of confusion. Any confusion precedes new learnings. Any new learning becomes a comfort zone. Every comfort zone is preceded. Every comfort zone precedes confusion. I think he means it is preceded by confusion. So, yeah, <laughs> he says that's confusing. I know. I'm about to get a new comfort zone. So there's Lisa saying, find out what your fears are, face them, battle them, and beat them. So my take on that is you don't really have to beat them. Uh, like it, if we make it a fight, then we end up feeling worse. So we just embrace action in the face of fear and invite the fear to come along with us. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's easier than fighting. Work with, not against. Knowledge is not the absence. It's not the absence of fear. It's the acknowledgement. It's the acknowledgement. <laughs> you know, you know, courage is courage is in saying. Oh, well, can you fears. talk a little bit further away from your microphone? I think that might be it. No, nope, that's not it. No. <laughs> <laughs> We still got oh, going on. No, still not clear. All right. That's better. How about now? Yes. <laughs> I don't know where it is. We can hear you now. You froze. Yeah, you are frozen, my good man. <laughs> <laughs> not frozen in fear. <laughs> not <laughs> Paz Simpson. <laughs> So insightful. Uh, it's yeah. really a pleasure to talk with him. <laughs> well, yes, and it, it really he brings on a really good, it, it, lots of good questions too. Because then, how do we I mean, questions in my mind? How do we determine what our passion is so we know how to get out of our comfort zone? How does somebody know that? Because sometimes people go through life. In their dead end job, sorry. This is this is a huge problem, eh? Is when people don't have purpose, they feel a kind of an emptiness uh, inside of them, or a listlessness, or something like they are really not connected to meaning. That's meaningless. I guess would be the most accurate word. Okay. And so that's okay. why I have so much fun connecting people to purpose. I just love connecting people to purpose. And the way you do that is to figure out where in life have you had your most joy. And when you take those moments where you've experienced your most joy and you put them together and look for the common thread, mm -hmm. then you can figure out what your purpose is. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. Actually, there's a whole chapter in my book on exactly what questions to ask so that you can uh, actually uh, find your, uh, your purpose. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let me see which chapter. Let me get. Uh, let me get the book. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. It's the purpose chapter. <laughs> okay, so there's the book. <laughs> and now I'll uh, check it out. I'll tell you which chapter. It's chapter five. Chapter five. <laughs> there you go. You <laughs> but some of, the, some of the processes, my understanding, the process is connected to something that will tell good in the past that you can actually use in the present moment to put yourself in a place of understanding what the passion really is for the future. Is that Yeah, basic? exactly. Exactly. And then um, there's another part of it, though, because it's one thing to be purposeful, but you also want to be connected. So meaningful living is being purposeful and connected. So uh, if you want to know what larger effort you're you're connected to, like in my case, I'm connected to the happier world. <laughs> <Yeah. Yoo -hoo. laughs> okay, okay. So, so how do you know that? Do you imagine a world that's out there that's different than this one, but not by very much? 
the real key difference in that world is you, everybody on that world is just like you are. Okay. And then you ask yourself, what does that world have more of than this world? Hey, Morgan and Beth, welcome aboard. What, we're in a different world right here, Morgan and Beth. We're in the world of happiness and having that discussion, how to get out of our comfort group. <laughs> yes, 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 and how to connect with purpose. <laughs> how to connect with purpose. We also have Pat Simpson on here. And, uh, hey, Pat. He's not Pat Simpson. He's the marvelous Pat Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> Connect to the happy. When I look, at, when I look at that imaginary world, what I see is much more happiness out there. And so, uh, like I've done this for dozens and dozens of people. And so, you know, some people are about a more organized world, some a more disciplined world, some a more uh, happy world, some a more loving world, some a more collaborative world. That you know, for each person, they have they they know what it is for them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, you, and everybody's different. So everybody's got that, that, that own internal compass that can steer them in the right direction. Yeah, that. exactly. Yeah, some people are more evolved world. There's, <clears throat> when I help people find their purpose, that's a two-step process, right? The first part is figuring out the purpose. The second part is figuring out what your contribution, what the larger thing your contribution is a part of. And that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so inside of you, then, there's a little light bulb that goes off. When that, yes. you can actually feel that connection when somebody has that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like what I often do is um, I often help people get clarity on it by asking them questions around it so they can uh, refine it. Like, you know, sometimes they describe it rather than name it okay and so then in those cases i'll help them to uh put a word on it or a couple of words on it that that works very awesome it is so much fun because <laughs> <laughs> there is no better way of living <laughs> purposeful life it enhances everything you really want whether it's health wealth relationships success sleep fitness spirituality whatever yeah 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 so it is the pathway to goodness <laughs> actually the pathway to greatness Yay! Good call. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> and for every one of us, there is greatness in you yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> every one of us. <laughs> so the blessings are in, the blessings are in uh, taking the action, feeling the feelings that resociate to the passion that you're actually intending to take on to do. And uh, living that, living that. Yeah. So that, yeah. The, so the first part is discovering your purpose, and then the next part is aligning with your purpose. So carries aligning your actions more to you in um, embody more and more purposeful living. Because purposeful living is fun. <laughs> Have you know, noticed more on people are more unhappy when their life has no purpose? Do you notice that people who spend more time watching television are a lot more unhappy than people that actually do something with their life? Exactly. They, they question themselves so they get smaller and so that they turn their attention outward to um, numb the pain. Yes. yes. And then, so then it becomes passive in 
whatever form, whether it be, um, you know, drugs, alcohol, sugar, TV, sex, shopping, um, whatever. Mm -hmm. All all avoidance actions are about not liking the self. Yes. Yes. Which is why happiness is the twin of love. <laughs> Loving yes. me, happy man. <laughs> Me and my kids every day screaming, I love my life at the top of my life. You, I love my life. <laughs> every day, that's how we start our day. We start our day with a, a real a real simple thing. I think good. I do good. I feel good. So every day, I'm happy. I'm welcome and do everything in a prosperous way. And then we scream, I love my life. And keep it pushing. That's how we start out there. Awesome. Paz, can you type that into the chat? I, I love sure can. my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but there's much, much more to it. <laughs> yes. Yes. That would be so powerful. To I mean, Paz, that, that was really, really powerful. Yes, 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 yes. Why do I look like an eggplant? <laughs> As I tell you, I <laughs> That's funny, Lisa. <laughs> hey, hey, we're so happy to see everybody here today. It is a beautiful day. It is, absolutely. I mean, I mean Thank you guys, you know, jumping on and, 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 and ask us some questions. Even, you know, get on this panel. And these are probably the two most, I mean, they have studied this word happiness throughout their lives. I mean, for the last, for many, for a couple of decades. So yeah. it's a superb opportunity to challenge them <laughs> on this topic because, it really needs to. It really needs to lighten this planet up in many different ways for us. Yes. Just the word happiness does. Yeah, exactly. And what we want is everybody to really understand happiness so that they can live happiness. <laughs> so just to refresh everybody's mind, in my mind, happiness is about harmony, harmony with yourself, harmony with your environment and harmony with your purpose for living. And that's what I'm about. That's what this book is about. And that's what humanity is about. <laughs> that's the damn truth. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a great day. Well, so, does anybody else have any other questions? Uh, let me see. Is there anything here? No, I think we're uh, I think we're in good shape. Okay. So then, the the question of the day is, what are we going to talk about tomorrow? <laughs> Well, tomorrow I'm going to sleep in. That's a really good plan. Let's talk about God tomorrow, but not on Blab. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great one, having a talk on God. That yeah. Oh, that yeah, would be. That would be very interesting. <laughs> that would be, you, know, you think we could get some controversy on that one? Oh, I think we probably could. <laughs> <laughs> So I was going to propose that on Monday we talk about focus, but we could we could also focus on God. <laughs> well, that might be just a little weird for some. That might be. You're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that would be a great topic. I think it would be a great controversial topic. <laughs> It would certainly be a powerful one at that. <laughs> I see Paz put up his little um, morning affirmation there he does with his kids. I think that's awesome. I think good. 
I do good so I can have a great day. I am happy, I am healthy, and do everything in a prosperous way. I love my life. <laughs> Thank you, Pass. I mean, absolutely powerful. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. I love my I love life. My life. <laughs> I love my life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's so, focus on the focus God within. Good comment, Daniel. <laughs> put in the chat what you guys would want to hear from us. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you want us to talk about? What questions do you have that are big? Questions in your mind, like how can this work? How can you end unhappiness for good? How can you guys be so foolish? <laughs> hey, there, there's a good question from Lisa, Lisa K. Yeah, I have ended unhappiness for good. It's more than... Um, seven and a half years since I have been angry or stressed or frustrated. And in that uh, time, you know, in the beginning of that, I was living with uh, my three teenagers, my three cats, my dog, and my wife who wasn't believing in what I was doing. <laughs> so but even in that environment, I was able to end unhappiness. So I think that if you think about it, there's only four things that we talked about in another one that cause unhappiness. So that's something about our past that's not healed. Something about us now that we don't like, either the way we uh, look or the way we behave. Um, something around us that sets us off in a negative way. And then uh, something uh, that either we don't know or we feel unwilling or able to get what we want. So if, if you heal the hurts of the past and take the wisdom from them, and then you learn to be in harmony in the present, and then you are doing your purpose for the future and the present, then what is left to be unhappy about? You're just doing your meaningful work and you're helping the world and the world is loving it. So why not? Why, why be unhappy? <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> That's true. When you, when you get that, where you raise your own vibrational level, true. and as you raise your vibrational level, then there are less and less negative things that happen to you. <laughs> so it's do good, be good, feel good. <laughs> or as Paz so eloquently pointed out, do great, feel great, be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you shoot for greatness every once in a while, you can bump your head on good. Yeah. Ah. Ah, good one, good one. <laughs> Yoo -hoo. Okay, I think we should laugh ourselves out. What do you think uh, there, people? <laughs> Sounds like a fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, take care, stay well, have fun. And <laughs> it's <yeah>. been great. <laughs> I hope to see you on Monday. <laughs> Monday, Monday, 2 o'clock. Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! Steven. <laughs>